Guys, welcome to the podcast today. We're going to get into a an idea that I think a lot of you have probably experienced. I think it's kind of a human condition, right? The idea of comparison, comparing yourself to other people, seeing where they're at and looking at yourself. And sometimes maybe that makes you feel good. Sometimes it maybe makes you feel bad. I think a lot of times the times where it really stands out to us is when it makes us feel bad. And um, a lot of times comparison is, you know, there's that famous quote, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah, can be. Can be. And so we'll talk about that. And but we'll also talk about why I think actually comparison can be a really useful thing. And um, it just really depends on what you're comparing. You got to compare the right things. And uh, we'll get into that in today's podcast. Again, thanks to our sponsors for helping make this thing happen so we can. What would be the word that I'm thinking of? We can we can. What's a word to bring something nice into someone so we can we can bless your ears with our uh, our voices as musings we, of uh, our musings about jujitsu and, and life and everything else. So our sponsors to help make this happen. One of them is Charlotte's Web. If you guys have never tried Charlotte's Web before, I encourage you to check out some of their products. Um, I just recently came off my like periodic like off time on. Um, CBD. Okay. Uh, I've talked about this before. Like I'm just a weirdo. Like, so sometimes I will detox off coffee. Sure. Sometimes I'll stop using supplements. And the reason why I do it, it I, like I was talking to Eugene's wife just a minute ago and, uh, you know, she's always like, she's always doing something with her hair. Yeah. You know, and she's like, <laughs> she's like, I'm not doing anything with her hair. She's like, I don't have a hair appointment. And I was like, why? She's like, because I want to make sure that like, I don't feel like attached to having to do something. And so for me, I, I do the same thing with supplements. I'm like, it, 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 there's no, there's no reason not to use them or anything like that. Sometimes I'm just like, I want to know that I can operate without them. But also what that does is it allows me to appreciate the effects that they do have because you get off of them. You're like, Oh, that's what that was doing for me. Yes. And one of the effects that I typically feel from CBD is that I feel, uh, it definitely helps me as far as my ability to rest. It's, it's what I feel. Again, I have no additional scientific backing on this. Uh, for me personally, there's, you know, information where they, it does seem to help promote better sleep cycles. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it can reduce uh, sports induced inflammation, things like that, which obviously we deal with if you're training all the time. Uh, but for me, I, I do feel like it does help with the rest. And so for me, I'm, I'm glad to be back on it, um, back to use my, my CBD stuff. And so again, I encourage you to try it out too and see what you feel from it. Uh, you can get uh, any of their products for 20% off if you go to their website using the promo code JITSU20. Uh, at the checkout. And again, their website is charlottesweb.com. So again, if you guys want to check them out, check them out. And uh, my encouragement is to you, my invitation to you is to try it out for about a month, see what you feel. So what kind of effects you have, and then base your sort of your buying decision off of that from there on. Because again, a lot of times people talk about all sorts of different things, supplements, diets, exercise, exercise plans, everything else. And my encouragement with that stuff is always to try it for yourself and see what you get. Yeah, we're still doing the the video series. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably so, the last. I think we're coming we're to the end of it. We're winding, winding down. down. Yeah. So mm -hmm. basically, if you guys buy uh, anything from Charles Webb on their website afterwards, send the uh, podcast email or send me um, or or the podcast email or Instagram a DM saying, hey, and, and with the picture of your order, say, here's my order. I bought some Charles Webb stuff and you will receive a link to a series of videos that I never released. It's about 20 plus videos or something like that. Um, I call them the lost videos. And basically it's a series where I, they, they were videos that should have been uploaded at some point, but they didn't because maybe the sound was a little wonky in some part of the video, or maybe I just never got around to them. And I felt like the videos just, you know, after a certain point, maybe I just, I, I, I'm so weird. It's like, on, on it's like, uh, <laughs> like videos in my 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 youtube like if i don't post them soon enough i feel like they have an expiration date <laughs> so they don't but they yes. don't they don't but like i i don't feel like there's like some of these videos that had good stuff in them there's even like a workout video with me and some stuff and there's some good q and a's that we've done it just for whatever reason it's like eh, i'm not gonna post them and so they're they're there but you can get access to them if you'd like um after you um uh, buy the product by sending us a a copy of your order and we'll send you the link with the videos also, thanks to Matt at Epic Roll for helping sponsor the podcast and uh, keep it going. If you guys have never checked out his website and you're getting itch to buy some new jiu-jitsu gear or t-shirts or whatever it might be, I encourage you to go over to his website, epicrollbjj.com and check him out. He's got a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool products, uh, good quality, uh, and also cool designs. I'll be working with him this year coming up to design a new set of jiu-jitsu rash guards and shorts. I like the stuff that he puts together. It's the stuff that I wore in the competition back in um, 
December of 2022 at the, the Nogi Worlds. I wore my stuff that was made by Matt. Um, I've, you know, I've put his stuff through the ringer and worn it for several years and it's held up pretty well. And so I'm going to get another batch of his stuff made for uh, my gym and for my jujitsu stuff. And again, I, uh, I feel comfortable doing that because one, I like Matt as a person. He's a good guy running the company. And to me, that's always an important thing when you connect with the person that's actually in the front of the company. You know, he's a jujitsu guy that's out there sweating and grinding just like the rest of us. And then also, too, he makes a good product. And so I'm like, okay, I feel I feel confident then with that product and with the person that that's who I want to do business with. And so, again, if you are interested in checking out some of his products, whether it's a gi, rash guard, shorts, t-shirts, whatever it might be, check out his website at epicworldbjj.com and you can get 15% off the order with the promo code jujitsu. Also, guys, if you are like me and sometimes you have to do some traveling um, and you, you know, like to do some surfing around on the internet with your phone or your computer, whatever it might be, you may be interested in getting a VPN. So NordVPN, I'm sure you guys have heard about them. They're, I feel like they're one of the more popular companies out there that provide a VPN service. They got to with they got with us recently and you know basically set up a sponsorship. And so we started playing around with the product because you know let's see what it does. And again, where I feel like for me, like you know, one of my things is whenever we get something like this, I'm like, well what what pro what is the service that it it provides it's valuable. And for me thinking about it, like one of the cool things is that you have protection when you're out uh, out and about connected to open networks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you have some protection on your system. Because again, a lot of times I was, I've talked, talked to several people that are in that, like that space that like cybersecurity, like, yeah. like, you know, like hacking community, stuff like that. And, you know, they'll make jokes like people are completely unprotected at all. And you know, I, I think that most people don't really necessarily care, which is unfortunate because yeah. you'll care as soon as it goes bad for you. Yeah. Um, but again, if you're someone that like, if you value the security that you have around you and you don't want to have your stuff basically swiped off of you when you go into a coffee shop or when you're at an airport or whatever it might be. And so if you guys want to check them out, you can check them out at nordvpn.com slash jujitsu. Um, when you do that, you'll get up to four months free, 30 day money back guarantee. And they've got some different plans. There's, I'm looking at them right now. They've got a one and a two year plan. Uh, it, the price for it is as low as 288 per month. Uh, so that's fairly cheap. I mean, that's cheap. Two eighty eight per month. That's two dollars like, eighty eight cents. That's like less than your cup of coffee for a month, and you don't you have protection on your phone or on your computer, multiple devices, so you don't have to worry about some freaking Yahoo taking your stuff. Darn it's, Yahoos. Darn Yahoos. People that like know more about all this stuff than we do and snatching your stuff and then going off with it. So again, yeah. check them out. NordVPN.com slash jujitsu. And if you guys want to support the podcast directly, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast. Upon joining, you'll get access to a ton of exclusive content that has not been released anywhere. Um, in addition to that, you'll get access to instantly, you'll get access to a couple of videos that I think are pretty useful. I've talked about these before. One is going to be a mobility slash sort of stretching type video, of, I guess, if you will. Basically, it was originally Eugene went out and did this for some of our camps. It's 20 minutes. He targets specific jujitsu muscles that get tight and rigid and, you know, they don't feel very good. And he targets those to make sure that you can loosen those up and strengthen other muscles that sort of work in tandem with those. So again, everybody did, that did that 20 minute little warm up routine was like, Oh my God, my hips feel so loose. My low back feels better. My shoulders feel better. So again, check it out. And then also you'll get access to a whole set of uh, videos that was from one of my seminars. And again, you get a full seminar upon joining. So you get a seminar, you get a stretching um, class in there all included as part of it. And then you get all the exclusive content that we normally do from the podcast and everywhere else. And so again, you get that by going to patreon.com slash the jujitsu podcast. And uh, last but not least, guys, if you want to join my email newsletter and get my daily email, what's it's almost daily, and uh, as well as receive three free jujitsu ebooks upon joining, one going into your game plan guide, one being on drilling, and the other being an at home study guide slash uh, workout guide. I created it originally during uh, during 2020 during the lockdowns to give people something to do when they're at home. If you guys want to get access to those three free resources, and get my daily email newsletter. You can do so by going to my website at jujitsu.net slash join, J-O-I-N. And guys, with that said, let's get into the podcast. Mm -hmm. 
there was recently a question I got um, from a guy named James, and James was basically asking, he's like, hey, Chewy, I know this is a mistake, but I'm comparing my BJJ journey to other people's. Okay. Know? So, and when he was saying this, he's meaning like he's comparing like Bob over there has been training at the same time, and Bob's getting better than me, and Bob's submitting me, or, you know, um, Sarah's getting promoted and I'm not and whatever these kinds of things. Right. And he's comparing. And so he's wondering, he's like, how do I stop doing that? How do I stop comparing? Because it's ruining my training. And he, and again, he says he's, he knows it's a bad idea to compare. And so my thought on that is that, yeah, there is that side to comparison where he was, okay, it's a thief of joy. It robs you of the joy that you have because, you know, let's and, and you can think about where that stems from. OK, so you you did really well. Like, let, let's say, for instance, if you did really well by your own where you started and everything else, but then you look at someone else and you go, well, look at that guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we, we can all do that. Right. Because, like, you know, you could say, well, um, I won this thing. Well, yeah, that guy won that thing three times. I've only won it once. Or, you know, I made a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that guy made a million. Like I made a bill, you know, you can always up the ante, uh, in some way, you know, and there's always some, some facet of our life where we're not very good, you know, because every one of us, like we may be good in a particular area, but then there's a lot of areas that we're not very good at. And we can always do that thing. Well, man, I suck at this. And it's it just, it's such an easy thing to do. And so there, it can be that thief if you allow that to happen, but it can also be really useful to compare yourself. But what you got to make sure you do is you got to make sure you're comparing the right things. And so, again, this is one of those things where you can't compare the end result so much. You can compare processes. Also, before I get into it, you also have to compare apples and apples, right? So, for instance, let's really specifically to, like, jujitsu. If you're, like, a 40-year-old hobbyist who has, like, you know, two kids, a mortgage, um, and you come in and train, like, two to three times a week, and maybe you work out a couple times a week or something like that, don't compare yourself to a, you know, 20-year-old kid that's training twice a day. You're not the same. Two different, completely two different paths, regardless of the experience level, you know, because I mean, they can make up a lot of that ground very quickly. Yeah. Well, they, they, they have less to focus on. They have a body that's useful and it can withstand a lot more punishment, it can train harder. Yeah. There's just so many factors going into it. So you don't want to compare yourself to those people. Just it's going to be different. You got to let that go. You know, yeah. compare yourself to other 40 year olds. It's even like me. Like, again, I am a guy who I'm pretty good. Not bad. But like, I struggle these days when I roll, we'll say like, you know, a 26 year old black belt. That's tough for me. You know, like yeah. we, we got like Clay. You ever yeah. Roll Clay? Yeah. Clay's I roll Clay. Like he's awesome. If Clay and me get going, man, like he's tough to deal with. He's very good. Brandon, he's a purple belt. He's a good wrestler. 250 pounds. Athletic as can be he's tough to deal with. And he's big. And he's big, <laughs> you know, but he's big and he's athletic and he knows how to move. And it's like, damn, yes. it's freaking tough. Like, where's me out? I'm an old man. Yeah. You know, yeah. so again, I could get mad about that. And be like, well, when I was a pro, eh, there's no reason to do that. Again, it is what it is. But again, when you compare people, you can start to compare processes. So for instance, this is something that I've done throughout my entire life with pretty much everything is if I see someone that's doing something and they're further ahead of me in a certain area, I don't get upset about it. You know, I, I don't really care where they're at. What I care about is what are they doing? I want to know what they're doing. Like, what are you doing to make that happen? Uh, that's really cool that you have that particular thing. Well, how did you do that? Like I just told you just a minute ago, I was like, I'm going to pay some guy some money to do some consulting in a particular area of business that I don't know a lot about. Yeah. He knows more about it because he's done it. Now I could be upset and be like, well, look how far along he is in this particular area. And that's something I want to do. Well, I'm just going to pay this guy money. You tell me, hey, how'd you do this? Let me learn the process. I could be all upset about you being further ahead of me in this particular area, but what does that do? Yeah, but you got to, the thing is you have to get to that point. How do you transition from like, I want what you have versus I want to learn. I want to use you as a, uh, like a motivator or something to accomplish work towards like, you know, seeing that thing. Like, I think comparison obviously it's how you use comparison like you mentioned mm -hmm. you use it in a way that that can help you grow learn evolve or to use it in a way as like i want what they have and i'm mm -hmm. jealous of it and right. be mad about it or whatever like because i think it, it essentially we tell people well, you shouldn't compare yourself to others right but then once you get but down you're there, going to you, you know you're will, going to and, and you got to figure out well how now okay if i am going to compare mm -hmm. 
what am I, how am I going to compare myself? What are the, like the avenues I'm going to use to compare myself? Is it like, are you in the same lane as me? Are you and I, are our lives going in the same direction? Mm -hmm. Like you said, are you a 20 year old kid that's just training? You have nothing else on your mind versus someone that's 40. that's got a lot more miles on their body. That's kind of beat up a yep. little bit more, you know, injury prone or had more injuries. Um, what are you doing? Like, I think that that kind of stuff, I think once you kind of dive into the details a little bit, it's, it yeah. gets, it gets to be a little bit more useful. And I think it's weird. So I think that there may be, and, and I, I think it's different for everybody. So like something I was telling Eugene about this before the podcast, right? So I struggled recently after I won the, the Nogi worlds at my weight class and age division, right? Cause let's not get, let's not get it twisted. I didn't win the adult black belt. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, <clears throat> that is the ultimate prize. I won a master's black belt. Still good. Beat some guys that were very tough, very skilled opponents that have lots of medals to their name. They're not like, they're not chumps, but just, just making sure we're clear on that. Um, that's it. When I won it, it was a pretty good accomplishment. And a lot of my guys were excited about it. I mean, my my students were excited. A lot of you that follow Absolutely. me online, you were excited. That friggin', I'm, I took a picture post. And not that it means anything, but holy crap, that was like the most popular post I've ever made. That's awesome. It had like 20,000, like something. I, it was something crazy. I just remember I was like, well, that's, that's got a lot of like likes. It's crazy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The thing that I was struggled with was that I didn't really care. I was like, wow, this is weird. Like, I don't care. And I was like trying to figure out, I was like, am I not allowing myself to enjoy this? But it's like, no, it's not that because it's like I'm not holding anything back. I'm like, it was fun to do it. But I, I was thinking, I was like, what, what is, what's wrong with it? And I think it's one of those things that you come to realize. Like when I was younger, I remember I was chasing like I wanted to chase some sort of like, especially when I was younger, trying to chase some sort of point of validation to where I had something. For, I, I wanted we, we, we didn't I didn't think about it this way, but this is the way that I look at it. Back then, I was probably chasing some sort of crutch for my self-worth to lean on, right? Because a lot of us, like when we look at ourselves, our self-worth becomes based upon, well, and, and this isn't necessarily, I think, a wrong thing because, you know, it. you would like to say, hey, listen, you went out and you asserted yourself into the world and you became a productive, useful person in society. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't sit like you're like you didn't sit at home and say I'm worth something, and then you never went out and you you never like got out into the world. You never pushed yourself. You never figured out who you really were. You never dealt with struggle, right? That kind of thing. So I mean, I think it's not necessarily the wrong thing, but you understand there's a certain point where like once you get to a certain point, it's all just kind of like whatever, right? And so I've won some medals that I thought were pretty good, and it's like okay, I won medals. And so now when I win medals, it's like, eh, whatever, I won another medal, you know? And if I don't, you asked if like, I don't win, well, could, before the podcast, well, if I don't win, it doesn't matter. It's like, whatever. Right. My self-worth is no longer based upon me winning that medal when I was younger. It was when I was younger, if I lost a tournament, holy moly, bro, I was so upset. Now it's like, if I lose, I'm like, whatever, I'll fix it. If I win, I'm like, great. It was fun. Like I actually, what's funny is now what, what I enjoy the most is actually the actual competing. I used to enjoy the end result. Like I got the medal. I am the winner. Oh, I feel so good about myself. Right. Look at me. Right now. It's like, I actually enjoy the, the, the match. Like when the, when it's all over, I'm like, Oh, it's over. Darn. That was it. You know, cause there's that whole, there's that struggle. There's that, that moments, those, those moments where you're like so focused on this one thing and like nothing else matters in your life because you have to go com, com, have some sort of combat with this other human being. And it's just so it enwraps you. It's like, okay, cool. And then when it's over, it's over. But like the medals, like, okay, I got a medal. Cool. Hey, take a picture of it. All right, guys, like, I won the medal. Now it's going to go into the shadow box and it's going to go into the wall in the gym and I'll never, I'll never handle it again. I don't care about it. And so thinking about that, right, you compare yourself because we compare like results. Look what they have. I want what they have. And then let's say that you've done that. I've done this before. I've looked at someone, look what they have. And I, you know, I, I, I see what they have and I chase that. And I get to that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what now? And so then you want more. Yeah. And so there's there's never really going to be enough, but you can you can still enjoy. And the thing that this is for me is like, you can still have goals for yourself, and you can enjoy that process of like continuing to chase for something, you know. And so for me, I like I enjoy the process of competing. I enjoy the extra training, the the focus it gives me. I like 
doing the sacrifice of like getting up and drilling extra times. I like hitting those techniques in class. I like to know that I can still hit those techniques and, and, and I still have it in competition, but like, as far as that end result, it's like, eh, I kind of like the, I, I kind of like the thing that I'm doing. And I think for me, like when you went back to, the, I know this is this long winded sort of roundabout thing, but you're asking, like, you're talking about like, how do you get off of like the comparison of like process versus comparison of like results is basically you're asking, like, I think you, it's, it's, at some point, if you do achieve something worthwhile to you, you have to fall in love more with the process than the results. People talk about it and we say this thing. But it's like, once you get it, you understand. I, I listened to a, like a, it was like a guy who was like a multi, multi, like maybe he's a billionaire, might be a multi, just a really high millionaire. And he was like, once I earned like this first million in my bank account, I was like, yeah, whatever. It was like no, no amount of money that I ever made, ever made that same, that same like, holy crap impact. Mm -hmm. So it's like you were, you were, you were still improving and you wanted to build your business and you wanted to like keep improving things and whatever else, but it never had that same effect. You know, and I think there's a certain point where like you hit some big goal and it's like, okay, cool. Well, now it's, you're just going to keep pushing on and you can keep pushing on for different things that you want to do, but, um, you're never going to have that feeling again. And so like, you know, you, you chase a process rather than like trying to chase someone else's goals or someone else's end results. And I feel like that once you, and it, it, people say, but once you get it, you get it. Once you, once you've achieved something, I feel like it, like the pressure kind of goes off. And then it's like, now you're just kind of playing around and doing stuff because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if this is making sense, but that's kind of. Well, I think it's, I think you're finding a different, your own desire for what you're, it's, it's more, when we compare, a lot of it's external. It's external comparison, right? It's sure. like, you achieved this gold medal, you did this, you won this tournament, you got this belt. We're looking at the result. We're looking at, like you said, staying on the podium. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think, you know, when you aren't looking at that as a comparison, you're looking at, well, how did they do that? What was the process? Mm -hmm. Maybe even seeing how, like, oh, how did you win your gold medal? Mm -hmm. What what got you there? Right. How did you drill? How did you train? How did you eat? How did you sleep? How did you recover? How did you do all these things? That's a good comparison to make, right? Sure, sure. Right. That's a great comparison to make because that now that I'm giving you – I'm not just seeing, oh, well, you have this thing you achieved. I'm seeing how did you do it? So when you're like business-wise, you're like, oh, well, I want to see this person has this thing. And they know how to do it. They have a game plan. They have a blueprint, whatever you want to call it. I want to know how they did that. Mm -hmm. and, and you're comparing like you, you're using – I mean, yes, you are seeing how what they've accomplished, but you're more focused on – Well, accomplishing the better. process accomplishments matter well sure they do but it's like but it's like it, and you can respect those and you can be impressed by them but how did they achieve them it, it, like because again if, if you like those accomplishments and you're like i'd like that yeah well then how did you get there you know right but but you're not going at it from a like i'm jealous of this why are you getting this and not me you're going from a, a different perspective right i'm looking at it like that's badass bro that's awesome. Look at you. How'd you do it? That's you a, know that that some people have a hard time getting to that place. It, it's interesting. You know, I remember even as a kid. I remember like when I was a teenager. I met a you know one of my mentors, Al. Dude had money, lived his own lifestyle, took afternoon naps. Yeah, you know, and I was like, how'd you do this? The like, afternoon <laughs> naps probably got you. <laughs> well, I just well, it, it was so foreign to me. I'm like, so you have money. He's wealthy, right? So you are wealthy, like in so he, like every every I guess you would say every idea of what i thought it was to be wealthy it was all broken mm -hmm. because like obviously there are people that live like this but like okay didn't he didn't drive a nice car he had a he had a chevy astro van he some loved, of these kids don't know what an astro van is so he had this old <laughs> van that was just and he was it was in good shape it wasn't beat up or anything yeah. it was it was in well maintained yeah um but he had a van and i was like man, why why do you have a van you know, he's like, oh man, because I can put the kids in there. We can go, like, like we can go down. He's like, you know, and if they want to take a nap, yeah. they can take a nap in the back. And, uh, you know, I remember asking him one time, I was like, you know, I was like, yeah, why don't you get like a nice sports car? So I'm like a real cool Mercedes or something. Cause like, you know, we were, we were out in the nice part of town and he's like showing me these like cars, you know, or showing me like these people or whatever they're all they're driving. He's like, well, you know, my, my cars, well, you know, my kid's education, that's my sports car. Yeah. You know, instead of me spending 60,000 on this car, that's like, that, that's college. 
you know, and his kids are going through med school and stuff, and they're gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna have like they're not gonna have debt. It's huge, bro. You're giving your kids like the best like the best um, step up ever because they're not gonna get out and drowning in debt. Yeah, you know, it's huge. That's a, that's a, that's a that's a hell of a guy. So it's like that stuff, and then he would take naps. In the middle of the day, and I was like, "How can you tape naps?" He's like, "Well, because I have these people running these things, and he's like, whatever." And he's like, "You know, he's like, I like to do my work towards the the evening." He's like, "And so I I designed it this way." I'm like, "You designed it?" You know, but so it, then asking him questions about how he got to where he got to, I would just just like listen. Yeah. And so again, then I was like, "Okay, well, I, I'm not going to do it exactly the way he did it, but I can sort of take some of those things and bring them into it." And like the same thing with you guys listening to this, obviously when you listen to what we're talking about sometimes and maybe you get like a little idea for your training or your own um, lifestyle or whatever, you're not going to be able to just import it directly. You'll have to make it your own. It's like yeah. a technique, right? It's like, you know, so it's those sort of things. But again, going back to it, whenever I see someone get something that's pretty cool that I want, I'm like, bro, that's dope. How'd you do it? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Or I'll watch. And I'll see like, could I replicate that? Or do I want to replicate that? Because then there's the other side too, is like, sometimes you got to think like, sometimes I think we want things because we, because the trappings of society, right? Like, oh, I want that. But then when you find out what entails with that, like, you don't actually want that. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you think you want that, but you don't want that. You know, I remember like when I was younger, here's an, this is a stupid example, but you could maybe like sort of grow this out. I remember back in the day, I always wanted a big pool, had people over a big mm -hmm. pool. Pools are a ton of work. Yes. Like in a, in a big pool, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money being spent keeping that sucker maintained. You don't use it as much as you think most of the time. And like, it's not that, that it's not that big of a deal. Like I didn't enjoy it nearly as much because I used to live with Derek. We had that big pool. Yeah. You know, I was my responsibility to take care of the pool. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a pain in the butt. Yeah. I was like, so I don't really want a pool. You know, and so <laughs> you could think about that. Like, so and I know this is like, this is stupid, right? Maybe some of you guys love your pool and that's fine. But I'm saying like, you know, a lot of times we think we want something. Like, but you might, you might think you want X amount of dollars, but you don't know what that actually means to make that much money and how much work that's going to entail, how many people you have to manage and all these other things, right? Yeah. Or you might think that you want this thing for your jujitsu game. Yeah, you might want to be, I want to be a world champion competitor. You may not understand what that actually entails, how much training is required, what kind of lifestyle you're going to have to live, how many sacrifices you're going to have to make towards the traditional path, how many family members are going to be telling you you're doing the wrong thing and so on right and so again sometimes you don't know but you can get a good idea if you find people that have done some of these things and go how'd you do it you can get an you can get some idea of as to what's going on and you can figure out your own path based on those mm -hmm. you know and i think that can be super useful was was the guy that gave you the question was he asking about anything in specifically like comparison wise is it just like jujitsu specific jiu -jitsu was it specific. like he's basically looking around just like he so he basically was saying he's looking around people are getting promoted they're getting better and then he's not getting better. He's not getting promoted. And he's just like, man, we've been training some of the, some of these people have been training the same amount of time as me. And, you know, I'm not s s matching pace with them. Yeah. This sucks. And again, it's just one of those things where, you know, my encouragement to him, you know, again, and just to anybody is if, first off, you know, you don't want to compare the end result because everybody's going to, Jiu Jitsu doesn't follow linear progress, right? You guys could, you could literally go to the same classes people are going to get better at different levels, uh, speeds. But you could look around sometimes and say, okay, well, is there anything that some of these people are doing that I'm not doing? You know, you could look at what kind of shape they're in. You know, are you, you can even like question like, are they're in better shape. So maybe I could clean up my diet or stop drinking so much alcohol or whatever. Um, you could ask them about like, do you, do they strength train? I mean, there's, there's, there's things going on. You could always adapt, adapt and add better practices to your gym. Uh, or to or not to your gym but to your training mm -hmm. you know i did the same thing with like my training back in the day i remember i was a brown belt and i remember training down with my coach sean hammonds and i was looking at some of these guys he was producing and they were killing it they were winning all these big tournaments and everything else and so you know I, this was a time where i went down there and trained for about a week i asked him i was like okay i was i was down there training with these people and i'm ever asking little questions you know, like, how long are you guys training? What are you kind of training? Do you do? Da, da, da. And they're talking about, well, we drill this much. We do this many sessions da, da, and we do situational rolling and we drill, you know, there's these different things that they were focused on. I was like, oh, okay. I don't do any of that. Let me go do that. It made a big difference in my game because I was like, I'm drilling more now. And now I'm doing more situational rolling and focused on a specific area rather than just, all right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to roll. We're just going to roll really hard all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, there was different things that you could do. And so 
you know, doing those kinds of things can be far more useful than comparing just end results and then throwing your hands up in the air and going poo, you know? Yeah. I think like, um, specifically whether somebody learns a new technique or they learn a submission, they get you a submission. It's like that, that it reminds me of like this example, like you can just say, damn, like you get mad, you know, stomp your feet, whatever. Or you can say, dude, how did you get that? Mm -hmm. How? What were you doing? Like, what were you doing there? We do that all the time. Yeah. And I think like the person, number one, if they're like, no, nah, I don't want to tell you, then obviously they're, it's probably not the best training partner for you. Yeah. But, but usually you don't have those type of people in the gym. They're like, yeah, let me show you. Let me, but you have to be the one to like have the humility to say, man, that was, that was awesome. Well done. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. And then go with the, through the process. Cause people like, I think enjoy to be asked like how they accomplish something. I think it's oh, like, yeah. uh, it's a sign of like, well, yeah let me teach you like let me show you i think it, it's a kind of feather in your cap in, in a lot of ways right so like i think that <clears throat> you know we always talk about don't compare but like honestly you have to like be selective about how you compare mm -hmm. you know who you're comparing yourself to and then also like have the humility and just be have the ability to be like man that was awesome how did you do that can you teach me can you help me can you give me some some insight or you're not getting promoted or you're not getting better mm -hmm. you know you you always talk about the question like you'll have like a white belt or maybe a blue belt come to you like how do I get better? And you're like, wait a second, you, you have to ask the right questions. Like what specifically, if you look back at your game or your, um, what you're doing on the mats, can you figure out like what you're doing wrong or like what you're, you're struggling with? Like how do I get better passing guard? Mm -hmm. How do I get better retaining? Whatever it is. So I think having like better, more specific questions, uh, having a more, uh, more detailed, like asking, you know, what am I comparing exactly? Or what am I struggling with exactly that this person has mm -hmm. and, and trying to figure it out that way? Agreed. Yeah, yeah I'm 100%. You know, and I think it's just one of those things where it's just easy to get caught in that trap of looking at someone else's this, that, whatever, and getting frustrated that mm -hmm. you're not getting it, or that you don't have it, or that you haven't reached that point yet, or whatever it might be. And, and again, I, it's, it's such a just a universal thing. And you got to like, take a step back. And again, we're all gonna make the mistake. You know, trust me, I've made it before, whatever. Why not me? You know, but again, it's just not, it's not resourceful. Yeah. Well, how do you work through that though? Like if you're in that situation and you're, you know, you're seeing people getting these things that you feel you deserve, whatever yeah. that means, that's, you know, quotation marks. Um, what do you do? What's your like mental process? Or what would you kind of advise someone that's in the moment in this thing they're dealing with it? They're like, why not me? Like, what do you tell them to do? So like, I think it was like Socrates that he said that like self-questioning is one of the highest forms of intelligence. Mm. Right. And your ability to ask why, why, like, you know, like ask yourself why. And I think that that requires a certain level of awareness and self-awareness and self-awareness in itself is transformative because you, you, you look at yourself and look at what you're doing and you're like, what am I doing? Cause you, it's like taking a step back and just looking at yourself and thinking, okay, why I'll give you a great example. I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I've talked about this story before, um, but this is one of those good ones of like self-awareness. Years ago, one of my black belts, Chad, he was teaching a class and he was teaching a great class. He'd been teaching class for a while. Right. Um, and I remember, you know, he, he was young, he's excited. And there was this great energy about his classes. You could just go over and you could feel it. Right. And, you know, it was the first time that someone in the gym had had a class going like that, where it had the same kind of energy that I felt like I was in one of my classes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't felt that before because most of the time you go to the classes and it's like, oh, okay, this is a good class, but it's not one of my classes. It's not up to, it just doesn't feel like, well, like the same energy is one of mine. So I started feeling that and I noticed excitement and people were excited to train with Chad and I felt threatened. Mm -hmm. I felt, I felt, I felt insecure about it. So I remember one day I was like, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, you know, cut him down to size a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and watch one of his classes. And I was looking at him. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to nitpick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at all the stuff he's doing wrong. I'm going to let him know you're doing all this wrong. Just to let him know that like I'm in charge, that kind of thing, you know, this, this insecurity thing. So that, that, that emotion got hold of me for about a day 
I walk over to this class. I'm sitting there and walking. I got my, I'm ready to take notes down on my phone and just, just look at whatever he does wrong. I'm were you just, in the class or you were just sitting back and no, watching? No, sitting back and watching, just okay. observing. You know, I'm like watching, you know, which it's, it's not a bad thing. I watch some of your guys' classes from the cameras. Okay. Yeah, just to see what you're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, just watch. Just sure, like, sure. how's everything going? I'm just like, right. looking, I just kind of like look through. Okay, this is how long they were teaching. Here's how long they were drilling. Like, I just watch to kind of see how things are going. And so um, if I can't make the classes, and so um, I'm watching it, and then it was funny because I remember Chad was using certain words and cues that I use and I developed myself. They're not ones I heard from anybody else. They're, they're very much ones that are specific to me. Like sometimes there's people will say things or they'll describe a technique or a particular grip or something, and it's you learned that from me. I know you did because I never heard anybody else say it that way. That was mine. Right. Any coach who's ever taught someone long enough, you know, when you've left your imprint on someone. Now, Chad was not just being a replica. He was teaching in his own way, but he was he was very much influenced by me with these different things. And then I stopped. I was like, what the hell am I doing? He's doing a great job. Like he's taking the stuff that I gave him and he's taken his own his own experiences and his own stuff that he's gathered from other people, too. And he's melding it into a really good job. And man, he's killing it. He's teaching a class. Everybody's pumped up. It feels great. I'm excited. I, like, I can feel the energy in this room. People are excited. We're winning tournaments and stuff like that. Like, what am I upset about? And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it was like, I stopped. I was like, what, what? I remember I just gave him a pat on the back, said, good job, bro. You're doing a hell of a job with coaching. That was it. But it's in those moments when we're like, when we're possessed. You know, and it really is like a possession when we get possessed. Everybody can, we can all, we, we can all think of the time where we've been hungry and you just, you'll ravage and eat the worst foods ever. And then afterwards you feel terrible about it. And you were just possessed by this hunger, right? We get possessed by these emotions. They get the, they get the better of us, you know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it takes, it takes a lot of practice to like stop and go, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Do I want to make this decision objectively? Would this be the right one? That's tough. And that's why self-awareness is so transformative because just noticing yourself and seeing what you're getting ready to do. And if you can take a step outside yourself, just noticing that alone can be huge. So if you can say like in the middle of it, you notice you're comparing and you, you just catch yourself. Oh, comparing what? Why am I comparing? That kid's 20 years old. Like he, he has nothing to do in life, but train right now. He does, he's not going to college. He's just training all the time. He lives in his mom's basement. Like that's a great thing for him, but I wouldn't want to live like that. Right. Or like he sleeps in a room with like three other dudes, you know? I mean, I, I did that once I, I, I would live that life. Like I was training and me and three other dudes were in a studio apartment or two other dudes studio apartment. We literally slept like one next to the other. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't want to go back to that. It was a great training environment. It was fun while we, while we did it. I don't want to do it again, you know, but that's where they're at, mm -hmm. you know, or and you, so you have these points. And so you just got to say, oh, you, you got to stop and look at it. And I think if you can, if you can practice that self-awareness and just like ask yourself the question is what I'm doing right now. Is this resourceful? Is this useful to me? And if it's not be done with it, you know, but I think that's, I think that's how you, that's how you, it, and there's really no easy way to do that, of course, but that's how you do it, right? Stop. Like, and if you have something that's really troubling you, like chew on that idea for a while. Like if I ever have like something that's really like bothering me, that idea will friggin' like slop around in my brain yeah. for a while. And I'll think about it over and over again and really question myself with why do I feel the way that I do about this? Am I wrong? And that's really what I'm trying to get to is I'm trying to like get to the point most of the time when I'm self-questioning, I'm, I'm not trying to prove I'm right. I'm trying to prove myself wrong. Mm. Like you're making the wrong decision. You're being wrong about this. And because sometimes if I can't, then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good. But I have to question myself and try to prove myself wrong because if I don't try to do that, then, you know, then I'm just going to, whatever I'll find, I can find, I can find a reason to make myself right. We all can. Right. But if you have an idea, if you hold some belief, I want to like, for me, I try to maybe in some cases, try to prove those beliefs wrong. Because if I can't hold them up, then they're wrong. But if they hold up, even when I'm giving myself scrutiny, then okay, well, then we, maybe we've got something here. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that a lot of people don't question their beliefs, their ideas, their thoughts very much. Even like the videos, I remember this is <laughs> this is such an interesting thing. I've gotten to the videos so many times where I'm answering a question on like YouTube or you know whatever, and then I stop, and I'll start to think, well, do I actually believe that? And then I'll and I'm like, well, I flip the camera off. Like now I have to, and I'll go wander around out in the back for an hour, just like, is that really what I think about this thing? Because I can't share it if I don't actually think about it. You know, I got to really think about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's been several videos that never made it because I'm like, no, I don't, I don't actually think that. I was just going to answer the question. You don't believe what you're saying. Or I do believe, mm -hmm. I did believe it, but then when I actually thought about it, I was like, I don't know if I believe that, and I don't have a conviction strong enough to actually like hold on to that. So I'm not going to share that idea. And so again, you know, maybe that's not a always a good thing, but uh, but I think self questioning, self awareness is is, is key. And I think it's really useful for those situations where you have a situation where you're getting yourself into a, an emotional pickle by your own doing that doesn't need to be there. And if you can just take a step back and look at yourself and see what you're doing, it can be very useful and it can save you from a lot of, a lot of problems, not just jujitsu, not just with like, you know, achievement, but all kinds of random stuff. I mean, it's got me, it's helped me out a lot of times with like relationships and with people and stuff like that and everything else. No, that's a great point. All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the podcast today. Uh, today's podcast is a little different because we're actually recording in the morning. Uh, we usually record in the evenings uh, or the middle of the day. And now we're recording in the morning. So I feel like my uh, I just had my morning cup of coffee. You on fire. Well, I'm I going. Just, my brain's blah, 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 blah. it's all over. It's going. So it's good. Like, I think sometimes when that happens, like you get new ideas, you do like new, we kind of go in a different, like in the, the branches kind of we branch out and go into some different things. Well, do you remember the morning classes when you were coming to them? Like everybody would be, it's like, we, we talk about this. A lot of us do like the morning and the evening classes have a completely different feel, mm -hmm. you know, and in the early morning classes have a different feel that mid morning class for me is like my, it's my favorite vibe because everybody just, they're full of energy. They just had their morning coffee or they're just getting up for the day. Everybody's all perky and awake and stuff like that. And you start training and you just have some of the craziest conversations going. Yeah. I remember that. That's the thing that always stands out because in the nighttime, like people, we get going, we goof off. And it's like once the blood's flowing, usually the, the good conversations for the nighttime class happen at the end of the class. Yes. Yeah. But in the morning, it's like the good conversations are typically at the beginning because everybody's just hanging out, like chatting with each other in the morning. Um, but again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast and, uh, um, you know, took that idea of self-awareness and comparison and all of I, I guess really where that we were going into the comparison thing, but then really what it boiled down to was self-awareness and um, yeah. self-awareness. I, I guess it's just, it's one of those things where it requires a lot of practice, but super, super mm -hmm. important. Well, and I think that like initially everybody's going to tell you, don't compare yourself to others. Right. But it, you're it's, going it, to, you're going to, and how are you going to use that information? Yeah. How are you going to seek out or, or like use that stuff <laughs> yeah. to, to make you a little bit better or improve upon yourself or what you're doing. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's like one of those things where, you know, we, we could, tr we can try to live this pious sort of, you know, life of non wanting anything and, you know, whatever, but obviously most of us, you know, we grew up in the West and, you know, we want stuff. We want stuff. We want achievement. We want these things. And like I said before, I don't think it's a bad thing to strive for achievement because I think it's probably a good thing. If you make yourself into a like a very effective person who can achieve things, who can get things done, who can you know better their community with their abilities to do their things, I mean that's a that's a powerful thing. Yeah. Um. You know, right now at the time of recording this, we're um, working on getting Chatri, mm -hmm. uh, Sijog Tong, um, it uh, uh, scheduled for us. He's the 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 founder of one. Yeah. Championship. Like listening to that guy's story. We'll get into this and whenever we get him on there, it's like he's helped so many people because he was an effective person. You know, it's like that's a cool thing. So anyway, that said, hope you guys enjoy the podcast. We don't want to get into a whole nother one here at the another end. podcast. We might. It, it, yeah, we probably will. And again, uh, hope you guys enjoy the podcast. And big thanks to our sponsors again for helping make this thing happen. Uh, you guys can check out Charles Webb, charlesweb.com. Promo code is jujitsu20 for 20% off the order. Again, I encourage you guys to try out CBD for yourself, see what kind of effects you have. Uh, you know, my sort of encouragement is a month. Try it out for a month. Be, um, deta uh, what's the word, uh, consistent with it. I usually like taking my CBD at night. Try it out for yourself. See what kind of effects it has on you. And then make your own decision from there. But again, it's been a uh, it's been a great supplement for me. It's one of the supplements that's in my mainstay with my um, nighttime ritual. I posted an Instagram story last night where I had my red bulbs on. 
Yeah, uh, you have red bulbs. Did, did, yeah, you red I bulbs. saw them. Yeah, yeah. So I have I have red bulbs in the house. So I, I was listening to uh, Andrew Huberman's podcast. Yes, and so it was like sleep time stuff, right? And one of the things was red bulbs. So throughout the house, we have these. They're like lower light red bulbs, and I turn those on at night uh, mm -hmm. when I'm reading, <laughs> and then cool. and then you know like you go through. I go through my little process. It's like hot hot shower, you know, uh, lower the temperature down in the house to about 67, 68. Um, you know, and then I go through and get my book. Last night was an audio book. Um, that I was listening to a, if you guys like history, there's a really good, uh, great courses lecture on audible by a guy named, uh, Gregory Aldretti. Um, he's, he's one of my favorite great courses lecturers that they have. Um, he has a good, a lot of good ones. There's one. I just told one of the guys at the gym to get, which is his decisive battles of uh, world history. Okay. It's a it's a fun lecture to listen to if you if you like history, um, and then I took my CBD took my CBD to get ready to go to bed. Uh, it's part of the ritual. So again, if you guys want to try CBD, CharlesWeb.com promo code is Jujitsu twenty for twenty percent off the order. And guys, if you're interested in getting some Jujitsu gear, T-shirts, shorts, rash guards, the whole thing, um, try out or check out EpicRollBJJ.com. Uh, Matt at Epic Roll BJJ is a black belt who makes jujitsu gear for us jujitsu practitioners. He's on the mats training and sweating and you know breaking down his body just like the rest of us. And uh, so there's something about that that I I, I like. You know, it's like a, there's something about finding someone that's uh, that's involved in our niche, our business, who's actually doing it. That's actually training consistently. That's not just oh yeah, I train and here's my my obligatory um, obligatory uh, picture of me in a gi, mm -hmm. like who never trains. He's in the he's in the he actually trains and he's pretty good. I rolled with him before, and so again, I like his stuff too. Again, maybe that probably you don't care about that, but the quality of his stuff is good. He makes good designs. The actual quality stands up. The shirts are comfortable. The gis are nice. Uh, the rash guards are are good, and the shorts are good. And so I'm going to be getting some stuff made for him. Uh, coming up in the near future, so keep your eyes out on that, guys. Uh, but until then, if you want to check out some of his stuff, use promo code CHUJITSU, and you'll get 15% off on the order when you go to epicrollbjj.com. Also, guys, if you're interested in keeping your phone, computer, basically all your stuff safe and secure, then check out NordVPN. So NordVPN became a sponsor of the podcast recently. Um, and, you know, I like to play around with this stuff and figure out, okay, like what kind of function does it serve that like is is interesting to me that that i find useful you know and one of the ones that i think really stood out to me was the ability to, like when i'm traveling on an airport when i'm traveling and going into a coffee shop to use the internet or whatever being able to make sure that my phone my computer all that stuff is safe and secure um, it's one of those things where we don't think about it it's like if you've ever had a, a card stolen your your card your, like your credit card mm -hmm. you never think about it right and then it happens and it's like this sucks you know, or all of a sudden you've got to go through and, you know, now you've got to cancel your car. You got to do this and you've got to do the, the, uh, the disputes, you know, and, and then you, now you got to wait for another card and it's, it sucks, you know, and it's one of those things where you don't think about the security a lot of times, but it's important sure. and it's useful. And especially like with, I've talked to, like I said, I, I, I mentioned this in the beginning. I've talked to several of my friends that are in that space like they do like hacking type stuff and they do uh cybersecurity and they, they, they like f messing with stuff just to see what they can do. Yeah. And like one of them, he was telling me, Oh bro. He's like, if you came into a coffee shop and I was up there, I could just take whatever I want. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, it's like, you don't, you don't have any protection on there. Like, oh, okay. I mean, this was years ago and obviously, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, so again, it's just one of those things where it's a, it's a cool product. Um, and it's really affordable because I, you know what, it's one of the things for me, I was like thinking, Oh, VPN is probably gonna cost a lot of money. You know, like it's it's really super affordable it's like under three dollars a month yeah two like they've got different plans on it but they, one of their plans it goes down as low as 288 a month it's like under three bucks less than one cup of coffee for a day and you, you can the product and if you check out their website at nordvpn slash jujitsu they have a special thing for all the listeners that are listening to the jujitsu podcast it's four months free and along with that you get a 30-day money back guarantee so what that means is if you order one of the plans, it has specific plans. They've got different plans, but if you order one of the plans that that is eligible for it, you can get up to four months free, and then you get a thirty day money back guarantee. So what that thirty day money back guarantee means is you can try the product out. If you don't like it, if you don't feel like you're getting things from it, or if it's just like too un, it's too much of a pain in the butt for you, whatever. Well, then you can you can get in contact with them and you can get your money back. So it's, there's no risk to it. You can try it out and see if you like it. If you don't like it, we can always get it back. Uh, but again, if you guys want to check it out at their website, NordVPN slash jujitsu, 
again, you can get that special offer for all that is available for the Jiu Jitsu podcast listeners. And also, guys, if you want to support the podcast directly and get access to some exclusive content, I encourage you to check out the Jiu Jitsu podcast Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the T-H-E, Jiu Jitsu podcast. And when you join up, you'll get access to a bunch of exclusive content that we've created. And along with that, two pieces of content that we made specifically for this. One is a 20 minute, roughly, give or take, 20 minute stretching mobility sort of warm-up seminar so if you're someone that wants like a good routine to warm up to stretch to improve mobility specifically for jiu-jitsu this would be a good one for you because again it's was made by eugene who is a physical therapist he's a doctor who works with jiu-jitsu people he's a jiu-jitsu black belt so all those things and he knows how the body works and he's like hey well, we can do this with strengthen this muscle and stretch this muscle and when people were doing it at the camp that we had when we originally did them everybody got up and they felt pretty limber from it and they felt pretty good from it. And so again, it can be a really useful tool for you and your ability to stay you know, mobile, stay uninjured and basically be able to train more often. And then also along with it, you'll also get access to a seminar that I did where again, it's, you'll get multiple videos from that seminar, the full seminar, including some rolling and stuff like that, all access to you. And again, you get that from joining the Jiu Jitsu Patreon at patreon.com slash the Jiu Jitsu podcast. And last but not least, guys, if you want to join my email newsletter, get my almost daily email newsletter, you can do so by going to my website at jujitsu.net slash join, J O I N. Upon joining, you'll get access to three free resources. Um, one is on game planning, one is on Jiu Jitsu. Uh, drilling and the other one is on an at-home study guide slash workout guide which i created originally during the COVID times back in 2020 to give people something to do when they were locked down in their homes that could maybe help them keep their jiu-jitsu going when they couldn't train and so you get access to all those resources by going to that website jujitsu.net slash join and joining up and then afterwards you'll get my daily email that i send out and guys i think with that said that's the podcast so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you next week Thank you.